Now, when it comes to being a virtual assistant, email management is usually one of the top tasks that a really needs to delegate right off the bat. It's one of the usual, what they call, you know, basic tasks as a virtual assistant. Hey there, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now, my goal set at this video is to walk you through what is the process of email management when you're a virtual assistant. Now, if this is your first time on my channel, my name is Lee and Laila Kaba. I've been working from home since I was 15 years old and now run my own virtual assistant company here in the Philippines. And I post videos every Sunday and Thursday on how to work from home and have a business from home. So make sure to hit the subscribe button right there so you don't miss any of my videos. Now, when it comes to being a virtual assistant, email management is usually one of the top tasks that a really needs to delegate right off the bat. It's one of the usual, what they call, you know, basic tasks as a virtual assistant because it's just one of those things that people get overwhelmed with their emails, especially as they're running their own business. So this is one of the problems that you're solving as a virtual assistant. First off though, what is email management? Email management basically is just the process of you literally taking over someone's email, whether it's going to be on Gmail or Outlook or some tool that where you guys combine both. But it's basically a way for you to look over what are the emails that your client is receiving, cleaning it up, responding to it, doing different things to make sure that they only see the things that they need to see and to move things forward in their business as well. Now, there's usually three main goals when it comes to email management. It's going to be super quick and easy for you guys to remember. First one is to clean. Second one one is to respond and the third one is to do and I'll dive into those of course in a little bit it's just a quick way for you to remember okay what are my goals as I'm looking at my clients email and a bonus thing that you can do as you're doing email management is being able to either bring in a client or maintain a client for your client's business so what this means is basically you've either helped your client be able to get a client or they help maintain or keep a client or a customer that they have through the way that you have been timely when it comes to managing their email so how do you actually manage someone's email or inbox so the first thing is you want to make sure that you schedule when you want to check you don't want to have the inbox always open you want to have a time of the day whether it's three times a day or two times a day that's the minimum that I'm giving it that you check your clients email this could be at the beginning of your day right before you get to lunch and as you wrap up the day that way things are always clean or things that need to be responded to is responded to so that's the first part is make sure you try to schedule you can schedule this with your client even that before maybe their day starts or maybe as they're wrapping up their day you're able to go through their emails next is to create a who list what I mean by your who list is basically a way for you to check all of their contacts to know who are the people who are important and who to maybe reply later so this could be a list that you develop with your client but basically it's just going through their contacts and for you to know okay how often does this person email as an example you know is this person a client is this person another freelancer that you're working with is this person a guru or you know their legal aid or their accountant so for you to know this list is going to be important as you're managing their email and this is probably something that's going to be ongoing for you to maintain and to grow into but just having a who list is going to be so important next steps are the actual how to manage someone's email first one is to start creating tags or filters based on the three goals that i mentioned earlier now to create a tag or filter it really depends on the software you guys are using google makes it so easy on how to be able to create filters and tags and it's probably going to be a video for another day just because then i'll be on my computer but then what you basically want to do is you pick and choose different keywords depending on what you want to filter for and this is where also having your who list is important is you can create filters based on someone's email so then there's always a tag of like current client incoming client as an example this could be a vendor this could be a freelancer it's going to be easy for you to search and find certain emails that you would need and that is basically the purpose of having these filters in place so then they're automatically tagged they could be automatically archived or even deleted later on now from the three goals that I mentioned earlier, you can create different tags from this. Now when it comes to the clean, clean basically means that you want to make sure that what is supposed to be there stays there and what is supposed to be deleted is just off and there's three different ways that you can clean someone's email first one is applying what is called the 80 20 rule now this is something that i actually got from someone else i forgot who it was now at this point but basically you want to find out where you can be most effective out of, let's say you have 10 emails and usually two out of that 10 is actually the most important email and then the rest you can either delay later you can just you don't even need to respond 
respond to it or you can even delete it later on. So you want to try and find what is that 20% that your client would really need to read and go through and having you take care of the eight other emails and making sure that they're cleaned up. Again, this is where it's important having that whole list, maybe also having your client's priority list and their goals so that it's easy for you to go back and forth with them and have that clarity of what are the things that they need to see and respond to themselves and having you take care of that rest. The second thing that you can do when it comes to the clean part is being able to delete or manage subscriptions. Now, we've done this a lot. I still do this from time to time where I sign up for a freebie and then, of course, I'm now slotted into their newsletter. If it's not actually helpful, you want to make sure that you tag this. You want to add that filter. If you can do this by having by using a filter, filtering the word unsubscribe. So then it's usually in you know emails, usually with subscriptions for newsletters, and then you can tag that so you can easily see like oh this is just another newsletter. I don't have to read this. I can delete this. And then of course the magic here is then actually unsubscribing from those emails so your client doesn't have to receive them again. And the third way that you can clean is by archiving. Sometimes a email Email could still be something that's ongoing. Sometimes it's an email that you want to go back to later on. But the purpose of clean is basically getting to a point where your inbox zero. Inbox zero is, as it's named, is that your inbox is always clean every single day. So your client's inbox gets to be clean every single day. And cleaning, that's why its first goal, is making sure that things that are need to be tagged are tagged and archived so then you can still try to grab them later on. Again, this depends on the software that you're using, but in Gmail, one of the ways that I'm able to look at people's like daily reports, being able to see people's emails, is I have that tag. So even if it's not on my inbox, it's still in my archives in that folder so that I can just look at it at any time. Now again, the second goal is to respond. So on responding, you wanna make sure that you have three things. First is you want to be able to learn your client's voice. What I mean by this is how do they usually respond to emails? One of the things that you will do as you're managing someone email is that you will be responding as them so try to learn as much as possible like how do they write emails is it aggressive is it really nice do they use a lot of emojis are they clear do they add action steps at the end depending on the person you're working with that kind of voice will change a lot so you want to make sure that you are studying how they've responded before you want to make sure that you're studying how they're giving you tasks how they're communicating with you so then later on which is the second part you can start creating drafts for responses now when it comes to you creating drafts for responses, this means that it cuts your client's time of having to respond to that email because you've already created a draft on how they would respond to it. And it makes you just like, oh, they have to just check it, approve it, and then send it off. They don't have to think about it a lot of the time. It's just something that they now have been able to send off. And finally, one big thing when it comes to the respond goal is to create templates to make it easier for you moving forward. Now, templates could be what are the common questions that you've noticed that you receive on your client's email? What are the templates that you need to set up already? So for example, like onboarding clients or offboarding clients, there should be an email template that makes it easy for you to just send it. And it's already like approved by your client. You don't have to think about it. So templates is really one of the key things that you can start creating as an asset for yourself and for your client. Because let's say you took a day off and you didn't have the templates, you probably still have to be the one to help create that email. But if you have templates already that your client can just look up, copy, paste, send it, then it's not gonna create friction for either of you. And the last part of the three goals that you want to have have when you're managing someone's email is do. Now, a lot of the in things in do is from the book Getting Things Done. As I've mentioned in so many videos on here, it's really one of the best books, honestly, if you want to get started as a virtual assistant, it gives you that mindset. But anyway, you want to make sure that as you're cleaning emails, as you're archiving them, if there's anything that needs to get done, but you can't do in less than two minutes, put it on your to-do list and copy and paste that email. That way you can easily reference later on of like, of like oh yeah, I've already done this. This is now done so you take it off your to-do list it's important that you're able to capture what that email was so then it's easy for you to reference later and respond to that email so again adding a snippet of that email to your to-do list is going to be one of the fastest ways that you can keep in mind like oh yeah i have to respond to this or yeah i have to do this before i can respond to this Second thing on the do is to create reminders. You can create reminders of, hey, I'm waiting for this email, of like, hey, this is something I haven't responded yet because I'm waiting for this date. Putting in systems basically for you to be able to respond when needed, follow up, send out important emails on unimportant dates. So it could be that, you know, after three days, you're supposed to send this email to this customer or after five days into the program, you're supposed to send this follow up. You're able to schedule them and put them into your to-do list. So then you're able to 
follow up or email when needed. And speaking of the final thing on do is to make sure that you learn the importance of follow up emails. Now, a rule of thumb that I've taught a lot of people before is that if the person hasn't responded in three days, just send a follow up, just beep up that email that you need a response to. This is why it's important to build up your reminders list of what are emails you're waiting for. You can easily know when to follow up with them. Now, a few more bonus tips for you as you're managing your client's email. First one is to know the power of a signature. Even if it's your client's signature, make sure that it can be customized where you can put in their website, what is it they do. So then if you're emailing possible prospects, they can easily check them out. Next tip is to just know that you can just send, hey, I got this emails. This is just making sure that the other person feels heard, especially if it's something that they're waiting for you. Like there's a task that you have to do and then you have to get back to them. Just know that you can send an I got this email. And one of the ways that's going to make this so much easier for you moving forward is to create a checklist or a static operating procedure of how you manage your clients email. Again, it's going to be different for different clients. So you want to make sure that you're able to have a way, a process that you are able to check off things so like, okay, do this and this and this. When so your first time they're checking it, as you're wrapping up the day, do this and this. And also maybe a link to the templates that you've created. That way, again, it makes it frictionless for both you and your client to work on it. Plus, there are just days where we forget things, so it's always important to just have a checklist that you can check against. And that is basically what email management is. Again, it's just a way for you to have your client see the most important thing, respond to the important things, and have you be able to take care of the rest. Now, if you guys like this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button right there and comment below, do you manage your client's emails and what tips do you have for other people? I would love to know. And if you still haven't yet, make sure to hit the subscribe button right there so you don't miss any of my videos every Sunday and Thursday on how to work from home home and how to have a business from home which you guys can check out those two playlists right here and the latest video right here i hope you guys have an awesome day and with the small steps matters and see you in the next video bye